YouTube channel Changing Lives. Hello, it's another beautiful Monday. Welcome to Healthy Living on your number one Christian channel, Hope TV. My name is Bibi. As you may all know, October is dedicated for breast cancer awareness. That is the pink October. And today we are here to discuss and create the awareness about breast cancer. Before we start off with everything else, we'll go for this quick break. When we come back, the discussion begins. Do not go anywhere, stay tuned. Oh my friend, don't worry, don't worry. As part of effort to give back to the society and to fulfill Jesus' healing ministry, Asaman Seven Day Adventist Hospital, located in the Shanti region, is conducting the following services for its 2020 missionary service free eye surgeries, reading glasses distribution, diabetics and hypertension management. The program starts on the 12th of October to the 6th of November 2020. It is a whole one month to give back to the society. On site screening is still ongoing. Book an appointment now. Kindly call the following numbers for clarification and further inquiries. Administrator 0540-642782. Specialist 0242-257593. The program is sponsored by United Service to Africa, USTA, Ghana Adventist Health Service. You can also donate to support this noble cause. Bank name, Ghana Commercial Bank. Account number 620-113-000-0073. Name is Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Mobile money account number is also 0591 Also, Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Ghana Mission 2020, fulfilling the commission of Christ through the healing ministry. Oh, 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 oh. Don't worry, don't worry. Hello and welcome back from the break. This is Healthy Living on Hope TV. My name is Bibi. If you just joined us, today we are discussing breast cancer as this month is dedicated for breast cancer awareness. Our guest for today is Madam Esther Afole Kwekuma. She's a retired midwife. She's been with us for some time and she's here again today to help us discuss the topic and also help educate us as well. And Esther, you're very welcome once again Thank to you. Hope TV and Healthy Living. Thank you. I hope your day was good. Very, very. We thank God. So we won't waste much time. Um, we will first look at what cancers are in general, mm -hmm. and then we can narrow it down to our topic for discussion today. So what, what are cancers in general? Okay. When we talk about cancers, we have more than 500 types of cancers and depending upon the part of the body that it affects okay. that is what is called mm. that is why women has breast cancer mm. they have uterine cancer okay. cancer of the uterus okay. and so many others and then the men also has a prostate of the the cancer, cancer of, of the, the prostate, prostate yeah. uh -huh. but about 27 percent of women do get breast cancer Mm. And then two percent, only two percent of men mm. do get breast cancer. So men do get men, breast cancer. Yes, they also mm. do get breast, breast cancer. cancer. Mm. And I remember one young man, I went to do screening somewhere and then he came on board and joined the women's line. Everybody was pushing him out and he said, No, I want to come here. I want to come here and eventually when I really examined there was a lump. Mm in his breast. breast so i referred him to kolibu okay and then surgery was done for him to, to remove, remove the lamp. that lamp okay so just as women get breast cancers and then go in for operations men also do get it the same way and okay. what matters is early detection mm. 
mm. of both, both of in both. men and, and women. women. But cancers that mostly are abnormal growth of the d different types of cells that we have in the body. body. We have one that we call the epithelial cells. Okay. So it's the abnormal growth of epithelial cells mm. in a particular place in the body. The okay. blood vessels, the blood itself, and it, it can all get cancer. Cancers, mm -hmm. okay. So basically, um, then when we say breast cancer, basically means that cancer that is the affecting the breast. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, that's right. So um, now let's look at the risk factors. Mm -hmm. What really, because I, I know that cancers are very common, as you said. Mm -hmm. What really causes or puts people at risk at of getting risk. cancers? Mostly our diet. Okay. People who are used to fatty things mm. and some other things that they're not supposed to eat, that's lead to getting breast or to getting cancers. Cancer. Okay. Uh -huh. So we are supposed to know what we actually have to eat mm. and do. Okay. In some cases, there has been instances where some breasts have been fondled with raw flea that people get it swollen and causing pain and other things. They don't care about it for a while whilst other things are still going and before you know, mm. because there was a sore okay. or the person got hit mm. at that first time and they didn't pay attention to, to it, it, it could lead to causing other issues that will let the one get a cancer of the place, yes. Okay, okay. So apart from diet, are there other things? Mm. Mostly it's diet. Diet. Mm -hmm. mm. But mm. some people, majority of people are also born with it. Okay. When I, I say are born with it, it means it's a disease of the family. Okay. When your grandmother have it, mm. it's possible that somewhere along, along the line, line, somebody else may also get it. Okay. I know one mother who died of cancer mm. and in succession, okay. all that came from here, mm -hmm. they have had it from one state to the other. other. Yes, mm -hmm. so it's been like a chain. The grandmother died of cancer, the mother died of a cancer, then the children are also dying of, of cancer. cancer. Which means these people, their children's children mm. can, is in the chain. It's so in the chain. that is it, they can also be affected okay. by cancer. So will it mean that maybe if someone's mother has breast cancer, mm -hmm. will it specifically be, will the child specifically get the breast cancer or he may get any other cancer? It's possible she can, he or she can get breast cancer or any other cancer. Other cancer. So long as it's cancer, cancer can affect ev any part of the body that it chooses to mm. land. That mm. is why I'm saying this little body that we have mm. can suffer from about 500 different types of cancers, mm. depending mm. upon their locations. locations. Yeah, I'm asking because um, a friend whose mother had um, uterine cancer, mm -hmm. she, she wanted to prevent it. So when she, she was done giving birth, mm -hmm. she decided to take out her uterus, uterus. so that she will not get Breast ca a uterine, uterine cancer. cancer. Yes. That's why I'm asking if specifically you are going to get that, one, that cancer or it may affect any other, then it may mean that you don't need to be taken out parts your, of your, your body trust, because yeah. you will eventually get it get anyway. It. Anyway, the cancer chooses where it wants to land. Mm. Some people get cervical cancer, yeah. which is just at the end of the uterus. uterus yeah. uh -huh. Eventually, when it's spreading, it will get into the, the uterus. uterus. Yeah. But like you said, the person decided to remove the uterus. Mm. So some people, when they get the mm. cervical cancer, 
their cervix are taken out, out or yeah. depending the, upon the surgeon who is working on the case, he determines how far things have gone and the possibilities of either taking part or taking it all out. Okay. So, okay. Okay. That is it. Now let's come to symptoms because mm -hmm. um, I know that some people, apart from detecting the lump, they may not really know at the early stages mm -hmm. that they are having or they are about having breast cancer. So if you can take us through what signs or symptoms should so we what see do or you look expect? out for, yes, so that one can be on the alert and know that for this I need to get it checked, this is a normal thing. Okay. Mostly in women, every woman is supposed to check her breast mm. two weeks before her menses okay. and one week before her menses. Okay. That is where you can actually know the status in which you are, whether you have a lump or you are getting a lump or you have a pain somewhere. Okay. It was normally a week to the menses, mm -hmm. the breast becomes very heavy, heavy yeah. and it's painful for many people. Yeah. Others doesn't feel it, but other people does feel a lot of pain. Mm. So when you start to monitor that way, a week before menses, and then a week after menses, okay. and then any time that you go into your bathroom to bath, you can just also palpate the breast to see if you feel a lump anywhere in it. Mm. by using the middle of your fingers, four fingers, the middle of your four fingers you to go around the yeah. breast. Just in case it touches anything that you look like, uh, a little stone or something s somewhere, you have to be very much attentive to it. Mm -hmm. To what? Because in the early stages, there is no pain. pain. It doesn't okay. cause pain. Okay. So you wouldn't know. But you ha if you have been palpating mm. to be able to determine whether everything is okay, okay, just as you know your breast, okay. then the possibility of escaping anything eventually mm. will be addressed. addressed. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. That, is, mm. that is it mm. for... Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything about... Um, some fluids coming out of the breast or oh. the size of the breast increasing? Yeah. Some people have some fluid. Sometimes it's like milk. Okay. Sometimes it's like a little bit of blood in it. Okay. And sometimes it's clear fluid. Mm. All these are not supposed to be seen often. Mm. Because in every normal person, if you haven't delivered, you haven't gotten pregnant to deliver, or haven't had been a pregnant baby. and then had a miscarriage or an abortion, like we'll say, the breast normally is sup not supposed to ooze. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So those are the things that we have to be looking out for, mm. especially when you are able to palpate once a month mm. before your menses and, and then after, after your menses, menses mm. then mm. there is a possibility that if there is anything coming up you will see it as early as possible okay. for it to be addressed. addressed. Mm. Is there any change in size or color of the breast? No, the, the breast with just like I started when they get into your menstrual Period. cycle mm. because of the hormones we have uh, two hormones working on the body the estrogen and progesterone yeah. the estrogen level mm. is what helps us to get the menses okay when progesterone level comes in then it means you've taken seed so progesterone also gets into the system for the growth maintenance of the seed that you have picked up. Mm. Uh -huh. 
So if the estrogen levels are okay and there is nothing wrong, you wouldn't see anything much apart from the normal signs that we're talking about. But some breasts get a little bit, not some breasts, majority of breasts get a little bit enlarged okay. with slight pain, not, not, not much. Too much pain. Yeah, but with slight pain. Yeah. But after the menses, 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 when the estrogen level has dropped, mm -hmm. then the pain it's goes off normal. and you are back to normal. Mm -hmm. So I just want to understand, um, how do you differentiate between the menstrual, the pain during menstrual cycle and the pain to detect that maybe you have, you have a problem? Cancer? Yes. Mm. When there is a problem, the pain becomes a throbbing pain. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a throbbing pain. Okay. Like a pulsating kind mm -hmm. of. Okay. It's a and some people, even with the menses, they have it the same, but not much. Mm. It's not as much as when it's getting to any okay. other situation. situation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I forgot to ask this when, when we were talking about the risk factors. Mm -hmm. People have been playing with it, but I just want to ask. That people is, say uh, <laughs> people with big breasts mm -hmm. uh, are more at risk of getting mm -hmm. breast cancer mm -hmm. than people with small breasts. Is there any truth in that? Mm, it depends upon who fondles with the breast and what the one does with it. Okay. If it's being squeezed like mashing kinky mm. or <laughs> anything, anything. Mm. That, that puts the person much more at risk. risk. Yes. Okay. You have to consider that the skin is just as yours. Mm. Supposing it's you, mm. how will you do it for the person to feel comfortable with it and enjoy it? Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily the size. It's just no, not necessarily the size. How you handle no, it? Just how you handle mm. it. So it's just how you handle the breast. Let's go for this quick break. When we come back, the discussion continues. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> My friend, don't worry, don't worry. As part of effort to give back to the society and to fulfill Jesus' healing ministry, Asaman Seventh day Adventist Hospital, located in the Shanti region, is conducting the following services for its 2020 missionary service free eye surgeries, reading glasses distribution, diabetics and hypertension management. The program starts on the 12th of October to the 6th of November 2020. It is a whole one month to give back to the society. On-site screening is still ongoing. Book an appointment now. Kindly call the following numbers for clarification and further inquiries. Administrator 0540-642782. Specialist 0242-257593. The program is sponsored by United Service to Africa, USTA, Ghana Adventist Health Service. You can also donate to support this noble cause. Bank name, Ghana Commercial Bank. Account number 620-113-000-0073. Name is Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Mobile money account number is also 0591 443016. Also, Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Ghana Mission 2020, fulfilling the commission of Christ through the healing ministry. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, don't worry. Hello, friend. Welcome to a amazing Bible game called The Parables and Miracles of Jesus Christ. This game helps bring families and friends together, teachers and also students together to help study the Bible in a fun way. Difficulties. And, and Jesus enjoy. prayed for her. No, this one I don't understand. This one is a total disgrace to my father. So we should always be waiting on to the lord you should always be waiting on that so the wedding part as we brought the wedding part and made that know that we should always be watchful and waiting on to the lord i would have done something about it but i'm so get that treasure that's all about the parable okay Christian. jesus separated these ten virgins into wise and foolish oh. so 
what's your favorite Bible game? Parables. And Miracles. Uh, Jesus. Hello and welcome back from the break. If you just joined us, this is Healthy Living on Hope TV. My name is BB. Today we are talking about breast cancer and uh, we have a guest here, a very experienced one who is taking us through the discussion. You can also join us with your questions on our WhatsApp line on 0559 0559-680066. 680066. We are also streaming live on Facebook and YouTube via our social media handles, Hope TV GH. Hope TV GH. Before we left off, we spoke about what breast cancer is, the signs and symptoms, and then the, the risk factors. So we continue with our discussion. And Tiesta, so as you were talking, you've enlightened us on signs, symptoms, and what breast cancer is. Now let's go to breast self examination okay how to examine your breast yourself to know the difference between what lamp is normal and what lamp is not normal i can see you have a very beautiful chat mm -hmm. by Chats, you yeah. yeah so take us through please okay you can see the breast okay this person is fatter okay. than this person. Okay. She is a 27 years old. Okay. And that is a 13 years old. So the one on the left, left is, is a 27. The one on the right is 13 year old. Okay. This is my right. Yeah. She so is 27. Yes. So those watching on the from left home side will see it from the uh -huh. left. Mm. Ah, okay. Yeah. So then on the left side, that is a 13 year old. Yeah. Which tells you anybody can get cancer at any stage of life. Okay. There are people who are even born with cancers. Yeah. Especially children, some children have it on their eye. It is not breast, but they were born with it. Which is a different type a of ty cancer. A different type, that, okay. that is what I'm saying. So that's a 13 year old and by 13 years she had lumps okay. in the breast. Okay. So she was being seen but by then she just started menstruating and nobody has educated her on how she can do self breast examination. It is today that uh, mothers are much more educated mm. that they are able to tell their children what to do at a particular time in order to escape that situation. Okay. If there should be anybody in the family who, who will get it. Okay. So when you look at the breast on the 27-year-old the on the right side, you could see that the right breast, mm -hmm. which will be on their left side probably, mm -hmm. is much more bigger Okay. Because that one is swollen and even reddened. When you look on top of the nipples, yeah. you could see that that part mm. is even reddened. Okay. And she was in much pain, mm. but trying to hide it. Ah. So she wears a coat mm. over it every time. Many people will do several things just to hide it. Okay. But it's better when a week before your menses, you'll be able to examine your breast mm. to know how the breast looks like. Okay. And then after the week, mm. you, you screen from the weight to the size. Okay. Uh -huh, because it becomes heavier. Mm. And then it looks like it's been filled more like somebody who is going to breastfeed so there is more milk or something but there is no milk in it yeah yeah so when you are able to fill all this you can easily detect mm. because when a cancer lump starts growing up it doesn't get smaller at a point and then comes once to be very big, big. 
Okay. When they start, it's moving forward mm. and doesn't get back. And how it goes is, when you look here, you can see green lines. This is the breast dissected into two, like it's been cut flat okay. into two. Okay. So that is the nipple over there. And the yellow part that you are seeing mm -hmm. in the red and green part, the yellow one is the fat because the breast is made up of fibrous Fatty tissues, tissues. which is okay. yellow uh, with fat. So mm -hmm. that is the fat that you are seeing. And the green lines that are in chain mm -hmm. are the lymphatic system. Note. That is where if the cancer cell mm -hmm. should enter anywhere, it will be there and then be traveling okay. very fast all to around the parts. breast. Yes. Okay. So that is it. So nothing changes except that you have to examine the breast yes. every month okay. to know how heavy it is and how big it is and then after the menses mm -hmm. also how it turns okay. so that in case after the menses you feeling anything else mm -hmm. you can go to the health facility to have it checked, checked. if there is anything actually wrong with you okay. normally lumps are not painful Mm. Until they get to certain stages. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But normally, they are not painful from the beginning. Mm. Okay. So, how how is it done? If you can take us through how the process. How the breast screen. So I want to do it. I'm standing in front of my mirror. mirror. What next do okay. I do? First, you have to put your two hands. Okay. Over your waist. Like okay. you're holding your waist. Okay, so this way. Uh -huh, this way. Mm -hmm. And then when you look at your breast, the mm -hmm. two breasts in front of you, mm -hmm. you will see that one is bigger than the other. Okay. So you take note of the one which is smaller mm -hmm. and then the one that is bigger. bigger. Okay. That gives you the clue of how your breast is. Mm. So from time to time, if it should change, you should be able to notice the change. And then you have to, if you want to examine the right breast, mm -hmm. you have to lift up the right hand okay. over your head. Okay. And then you use the four fingers mm -hmm. to go around the breast. The breast. Okay. In circular movement. Okay. All around in circular movement. Okay. The cancer, when there is a cancer knob in there, a, a, a it will. A lump. Lump, yeah. Mm -hmm. It will quickly move away when your hand touches, touches it. Okay. It will quickly move away. So you are, s the four fingers are supposed to be firm mm -hmm. on the lump. Mm -hmm. so that if it's anywhere you can grip it mm. by the fingers then you know where you saw the lump okay. so when you go when you see that when you go to the facility you go and tell the health service providers that is what you saw mm -hmm. and whether it is a left breast or the white a red the left breast or the right breast, you tell them, they will also examine you mm -hmm. to find out, to confirm mm -hmm. what you actually saw. Okay. Yeah. So when the four fingers are together, mm -hmm. the lump is not able to move away. Okay. It's very smart. But if the fingers are open, it can just get lost and you won't even find Mm. where you saw it. Sometimes it can even get into the nipple. Okay. Uh -huh. So if your fingers has not been firm on the breast, you wouldn't know or be able to say it that you really saw a lump in your breast. Mm. Uh -huh. But at the health facility, it can always be detected. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, 
naturally when you touch your breast or mm -hmm. when you palpate your breast mm -hmm. there are some things like lumps in it oh that is normal that so is what you are you seeing know? here like like it, when you have cut an orange yes those are the parts in there the blood vessels and everything yes now how do you differentiate that from a lump that is growing in your breast that is what i'm telling you that lump the breast cancer lump mm -hmm. will be only one those ones are in chain so when you are going around the breast mm -hmm. you feel the same movement mm -hmm. round mm. but the cancer lump will be harder okay it will be firmer okay. this one is much because it's fat it's, like it's slippery. not yes okay. it's not that slippery but with the lump that one is a little bit firmer okay. and it will quickly run away to one another side place. and or another place okay mm -hmm. now still on the breast, breast self -examination. examination so i put my hand there and i have my four fingers, fingers where do i start from you can start from anywhere you want normally we start from the top but okay. somebody would choose so to start so the outer breast right before you, you, you come towards the nipple no any you can go anywhere normally when you start from the top you mm -hmm. go towards the armpit okay so and it's, in it's convenient that way okay so in clockwise or anti-clockwise mm -hmm. whichever is convenient to you okay so when you go round mm -hmm. and then come to this side the mm -hmm. top where you started from mm -hmm. then you can even if you are standing it's difficult to get anything in the middle if the the breast is heavy okay but if you are lying down in fact you can do a standing or lying down okay when you are lying down the base of the breast becomes flat okay so that one if there is anything anywhere when you grip it it will stay there mm -hmm. and then you can easily describe okay. how you find it then okay. they found it then okay. the nurses in turn will also confirm that mm. really there is something in it or there is nothing in it okay yeah okay so now breast self-examination you stand or lie mm -hmm. your hand behind your head mm -hmm. your four fingers mm -hmm. the middle part mm -hmm. or the tip of the four of the four mm -hmm. you use it clockwise or anti-clockwise anti palpate it a a along mm -hmm. inwards mm -hmm. so you get to the nipple mm -hmm. Do you need to press the nipple? Oh yes, you have to press the nipple mm -hmm. to see if there is any fluid coming out of it. Okay. In most cases, there is no fluid. Mm -hmm. In some cases, there is transparent, something like transparent fluid. fluid. And in other people, you get some milky, discharge something. Okay. And some other people, you get blood. So if you should get blood, or mm -hmm. that cloudy discharge. Okay. You don't have to wait. Mm. You have to go to the health facility for further examinations to be done mm. to exclude breast cancer or anything else. Okay, okay, okay. All right, so viewers, you can also join us or call the studio to, to send in your questions on 0302 nine five nine zero six five zero three zero two nine five nine zero six five you can also send us a whatsapp message on zero five five nine six eight zero zero six six and we'll read it and have our guest respond to it accordingly so mom as we were saying so for breast self-examination you do it yourself yes or for the married ones can their spouses help them out what does their spouses know? Maybe they are health workers. And they, they, <laughs> know well. more than, <laughs> they know even, more than... Even if they are health workers, mm. if they haven't learned it or been taught, mm. they, they can help you. Because when men get their breast, all that they think about most is to fondle with the breast. Okay. Just for their enjoyment and satisfaction mm. to so not be serious make them feel mm. like they are babies. Okay. that are to be fed mm. that is all 
So it's not advisable for... Oh, no. I, I won't say it's not advisable. Mm. Depending upon what you want and what you have taught your man to do, you can teach him. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. If you teach him how to do it, he will do it for you. And both when it's been done for you and you get to the extremes, whatever happens, happens. That mm. one, it is not a cup of tea, tea for <laughs> anybody. It's for the two of you yeah. to drink yeah. your own thing. Yeah. 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 Right, we have our uh, first question. Someone wants to know if you get your menopause at an older age, mm -hmm. are you at risk of getting breast cancer? Oh yes, in most cases. Mm. In most cases, many people does okay. get breast cancer. Okay. When they've got to menopause. No, the mm. person wants to know maybe mm -hmm. if the the right age for menopause is say 50 to 55. And the person gets the menopause like at 60 or 62. Does it put that person at risk of getting breast cancer? It depends okay. upon lifestyle and family history. Okay. Okay. So when you tell somebody you are at risk, you have put fear into the person. Mm. Just leave the person alone to lead her life. Okay. But she should be serious about her self breast examinations and any other things that she might see not going well okay. with her pertaining to the breast. Okay. Then when you are in constant touch with your service providers, mm. you live and you not think about getting a breast cancer at 70. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. How about getting your menstrual periods earlier, like mm -hmm. early menarche? Uh, early menarche is of these days that we have seen that. In the olden days, people get their early menses at 15 years, from mm. 13, 14, and mm. 15 years. Mm. It's these days, mm. Mm. all because of what we are eating yeah, and what and we are lifestyle. doing. Mm. I don't want to accept that because the person menstruated early, the They'll person will be risk. liable to getting a cancer. Mm, no. Mm, mm, mm. It depends upon individual and your built and mm. what you do with your body. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. That is what I will say. Normally people will say yes, because she had menses early, she will get Breast cancer. Breast oh, cancer. She's at risk of she's at risk of getting it. breast cancer. Mm. But I don't see it that way because people are passing through the system and they are not getting it. So why should one someone be at risk? Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Right. So let's go for another quick break. When we come back, the discussion continues. Stay tuned. Oh my friend. Don't worry, don't worry. As part of effort to give back to the society and to fulfill Jesus' healing ministry, as oh my friend, don't worry, don't worry. As part of effort to give back to the society and to fulfill Jesus' healing ministry, a Salman Seventh day Adventist hospital located in the Shanti region is conducting the following services for its 2020 missionary service free eye surgeries, reading glasses distribution, diabetics and hypertension management. The program starts on the 12th of October to the 6th of November 2020. It is a whole one month to give back to the society. On-site screening is still ongoing. Book an appointment now. Kindly call the following numbers for clarification and further inquiries. Administrator 0540-642782. Specialist 0242-257593. The program is sponsored by United Service to Africa, USTA, Ghana Adventist Health Service. You can also donate to support this noble cause. Bank name, Ghana Commercial Bank. Account number 620-113-000-0073. Name is Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Mobile money account number is also 0591 443016. Also, Seven Day Adventist Hospital, Asaman. Ghana Mission 2020, fulfilling the commission of Christ through the healing ministry. Oh, oh, oh. Don't worry, don't worry.
we are God's stewards. And God has entrusted us with time, talents, opportunities, capabilities, and abilities to be able to manage the resources that he has given to us. How we utilize these gifts given to us by God is our gift to God. Join me in this program, Dad, the Steward, as we practically look at how we can be able to fulfill God's ordained purpose for our lives. One of the approaches to a new field and is promising is actually attracting water from the air. My great-grandmother actually set me up in a kerosene business. I was selling kerosene in the night. So I started a juice at Confanoche Teaching Hospital. I'll draw a couple of designs and I'll give it to someone and then I'll take money. In this program, we shall look at how we can manage our time for success, how our purpose as stewards, wealth creation, job creation, personal development, corporate development, and how we can be able to retire successfully. Join me as we learn at the feet of Jesus in the program that the steward. Hello and welcome back from the break. This is Healthy Living on Hope TV. My name is Bibi. If you just joined us, we are discussing breast cancer and our guest has taken us through a lot of things and educated us so well. You can also join us or send in your questions via our WhatsApp line 0559-680066. You can also take your phone and call our number on 0302 nine five nine zero six five you can call on zero three zero two nine five nine zero six five we're also streaming live on facebook and youtube via our social media handle hope tv gh so Antiesta, before we went we you took us through mm -hmm. breast self examination. examination yes now we have some questions so mm -hmm. i'll read it out so that you help us and okay. um, answer it accordingly. The first one is, is from our sister Ama Safwa from Tema. She wants to know if someone who has never breastfed is a person at risk of developing breast cancer. In some cases. Okay. In some cases, it's possible mm. that a person might develop okay. breast cancer. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is where there is family history. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. It all boils down to family history, history. and your lifestyle, mm -hmm. I think. Mm. But breastfeeding actually protects a mother mm. from getting breast cancer. Oh. So the number of children that you have, if you persist mm. to breastfeed all of them, okay. and in fact, if you breastfeed for continuously for three years, mm. uh, you will escape breast, breast cancer. cancer. Mm -hmm. oh. okay, so mothers who breastfeed me. more, mm. their mm. kids, it's not possible that they will get a cancer. Mm. Or oh, the possibility is lower as yeah. compared to people that do not breastfeed. breastfeed. Mm. People who doesn't breastfeed and gets pregnant to deliver and yet they don't breastfeed. breastfeed. They are at much higher risk. risk. What of those who don't get pregnant at all, at they all. don't breast breastfeed? That one lies between God and man. Mm. We cannot determine. Mm. Scientists may say we have found this, we have found out we are, but the omnipotent is the one who decides okay. what man's life should be. Okay. So we will we'll look at so many things and see several things, but God makes it pass, come to pass, or stops it from coming. Mm. Mm. Okay, so to our next question, the, the person wants to know if a breastfeeding mother can do breast self-examination. Yes, she can. 
Okay. But when the breast is full, Milk. It would be difficult for her to notice anything. Any lump. Yeah. Okay. okay. But if the baby has well fed, mm. you're supposed to feed 10 minutes here and then feed 10 minutes on the other, other side. Where we are assuming the breast has almost been emptied. completely emptied. Okay. Then okay. that one, if there is anything anywhere, you can feel you it because easy. lump. Mm. It's harder yeah. than, than the breast, than the fatty tissue. breast uh, lobes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the person goes through the normal process, mm -hmm. puts the hand behind, mm -hmm. use the palm and mm -hmm. the finger and all that, mm -hmm. when the breast has been emptied. And when the breast has been okay. emptied. Okay, because someone, uh, wanted, someone wanted to know if, um, if you you examine your breast whilst breastfeeding, how to go about it. And I think we've answered that. It's, it's the same. It's the same as mm -hmm. doing the normal breast self-examination. Examination. Now, let's go to the stages of mm -hmm. cancers. I know that each stage has its own oh, characteristics, characteristics and what you need to do about mm -hmm. it. See if you can take us through. Okay. Normally, with the first stage of cancer, mm -hmm. The breast swells up, like mm -hmm. I showed you yeah. with the girls oh, yeah. one. Yeah. And then the skin of the breast becomes like an orange. Okay. That hasn't been peeled. Mm. So you can see holes on it, just like what I'm holding in my hand okay. right now. So this mm. is first stage of cancer. Okay. Which tells you that you have it. Mm. Uh -huh. The other girl's one was progressing, but it, there are no holes, holes, much holes on it like this one. Okay. And then at the point you see the nipples mm. also dipping in, in. Uh -huh. okay. 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 either at the side or the whole nipple dents, it, it, it dents. It, yeah, it's okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It dents into the, like it's gone into the breast. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. And you, you, the nipple is always dark, mm -hmm. but you see it's getting squeezed up at sides, like uh, polythene that has been put into fire or something. Ah, okay. Yeah, it does happen with so many people, depending upon how their skin is yes. and how it's going to deal with them. Mm. So mm. that is the first stage. First stage, okay. And then when the lump and other things are well developed, mm. it becomes very heavy okay. with pain. Okay. That is where it's with much pain. Mm. This first stage even has some amount of pain. pain. But depending upon the pe person's pain threshold, yeah. she will say, I have pain or I don't I have don't pain. Have pain. Yes. Mm. But with the second part, it's normally very painful. Mm. The second stage of it is very painful. painful. That is where the hospital or your service providers have to see as to what can be done for you okay. in order to relieve the pain and then get you freed. Mm. And in most cases, they will take you through a whole lot of um, what we call it, conversation, for you to be able to decide upon Make what you think. Decision. And then mm -hmm. they also give you their views on what they think it should be. Okay. Then when you are able to strike a compromise or you ask, understand them, okay. what will save your life okay. and you choose it the right way. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want will be done for you. There are stages, there are s issues where you get to those points, they will not spare you, they will tell you mm. your breast has to be removed. removed. Okay. So with those ones, you c if you say no and you run away, you go and die. Mm. But if they remove it for you mm -hmm. and you take very good care of yourself, following your medications and your checkups and everything, mm -hmm. you will live many years. Mm. I have people who have survived 
breast cancer mm -hmm. and they are fine. And next year I'm going to celebrate one of them in the grand way, having survived for 10 years. Wow. Yes. Wow. So that is it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, I want us to talk about, apart from the breast self-examination, mm -hmm. what other things help to detect the lump in the breast? In the like breast? Outside. Oh, the oh okay. Mm -hmm. Apart from you doing self-breast yes. examination, you can go to health facility. Mm -hmm. If you go to even the family planning unit, okay, okay, they can examine the breast mm. and then tell you what their findings are. Okay. There are we have the mammogram mm -hmm. or mammograph. As I was to say, mm. to you go at least once every two years. Okay. To go and have it done. And that also tells you your situation. If okay. you are able to afford it, you can go every year. Mm. That is a Fine. plus for you. Mm. We have the laser detector. Mm -hmm. That one, I even have one oh, okay. laser detector. I'll, I'll come, that I'll come and do it. <laughs> <laughs> that you examine the person with. Mm. Mm. And if there is a lamp, that one also shows. Okay. then you take a referral or you are given a referral to a higher facility, facility. for okay. you to be taken care of so okay. that you can spare your life every mm. year to live longer. Mm. How about ultrasounds? Ultrasound. Breast well, ultrasound. Well, that can also be done. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. To detect. So depending upon, you know, all these things that we are talking about involves money. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So... If you ask a person to go for ultrasound mm. and she cannot afford, mm. then she won't go anywhere. anywhere. Uh -huh. But if you ask her, go to the family planning unit, mm. tell them you are coming to examine your, your breast. breast. Mm. And they, she goes and then they do it. Mm. And they give her their findings. Yeah. Then it means the fear and everything goes, goes down. down. Mm. And then when they in turn add, prepare so that you go and do ultrasound. an ultrasound or something okay. where they would take maybe a little more money. Mm. The family planning unit is free. Okay. They don't charge for it. Okay. It's free. Okay. Then you come and prepare and then you go to the facility and mm. meet the demand and everything is done nicely mm. for you. Mm. Now, I want us to briefly talk about chemotherapy mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about prevention. I think our time is almost up. So if mm -hmm. briefly you can talk mm -hmm. about it. I know that once the cancer is detected, mm -hmm. depending on which stage it mm -hmm. is, you go through chemotherapy mm -hmm. to help you go through True. it. Yeah. Yeah. Chemotherapy normally are done in the bigger facilities. Okay not in smaller facilities. Okay. And then they try to help you with the chemo, some sort of heating to bring down, to kill the cells. Okay. To okay. kill the cells so okay. that you'll be able to be f free to live longer. longer. Some people live longer. Other people will have complications with it and other people will die but yes still it's better you have it done mm -hmm. and know how you want to live okay and then the facility service providers mm -hmm. will advise you a lot you will be put on medications that you have to be taken at every time you don't have to play with those. Yeah. There are people when they are put on treatment, they take today, tomorrow they forget, this morning they forget, and all. they are not consistent with their drugs. Mm. So if you are consistent with your drugs mm. and all the treatments, everything that they tell you, you abide by it, you it will live longer. Yeah, it will prolong, prolong your, life. your life. You will live longer. Okay. than expected. But has there been cases where um, someone has gone through it, the cells, like is breast cancer free, I don't know if there's anything like that, and then it comes back? 
it all depends upon in the individual okay. and what will let you get the condition rick or caring mm -hmm. is your diet and or your, your habits lifestyle. Mm -hmm. mm. lifestyle okay those are the things mm. yeah okay now i think our time is up so mm -hmm. we'll talk about I think the most important thing, how to prevent it. We don't want it to come at all, so that we'll go through <laughs> all these things. So how do we prevent ourselves from, from getting, getting breast, breast cancers? Cancer. Yeah, the normal monthly breast, exam exam breast examination, like okay. we said. Mm. What we say is early detection mm. is the first step of treatment. Okay. So, if you are taking very good care of yourself, doing your self breast examination, once a year you go for a checkup mm -hmm. and all that, mm. and there is nothing wrong with you, mm -hmm. and you, you are advised, you know what to eat, what to do, what not to do. People who have been drinking, there are women who drink a lot like, like they are not alcohol. women and uh, alcohol. Okay. And all that, all everything that is not supposed to go into the body, you defray from it and then not put it in there. So mm -hmm. the natural body that God gave you, you're going to live by that natural body. Mm -hmm. So the expected time, what the Lord himself has planned for you. But if you put in additions, tobaccos and all those, mm -hmm. it means you are going to kill yourself earlier than expected. Okay. So these are the things that we, we have to avoid unwholesome things and then the drinkings and doing so many risky things with our bodies okay you so see? i want you to break it down so that everybody can understand it because someone may not catch uh, what you may be trying to explain so let's take it so for diet mm -hmm. what are we supposed to eat or what are we not supposed to eat for diet we have to do away with Fat. Okay. When we take minimum of fat, fat and oils are good for us okay. because it gives us warmth. Yeah. But an average home mm. of a family of three, they need only three tablespoons of oil mm. for a stew okay. for the whole family. Mm and can be a stew that is not going to be for the three persons at one meal. Okay. If there is a leftover, mm -hmm. it's still good. Okay. But we rather take more fat mm. and then our onions mm -hmm. that we even put into the fat mm -hmm. to prepare the stew. The oil will be so hot mm -hmm. that the onion the color of the onion will get lost. It will be bent. Mm. Uh -huh. Those are the things that gives us the cancers. Mm. All okay. those little, little things. Okay. We are supposed to be on like things that have a lot of chaff. Okay. Like, like wheat, fiber. Fiber. Mm. Okay. You see? Okay. Those things helps build and clean the body. They clean the body and then they help in bodybuilding. Okay. So it makes you last longer. Mm. Fat like fat from the pig and all other things that are saturated, mm -hmm. they are not good for us. Okay. So we must know all those. Mm. And our normal diet, should be just an average that is worth living to bring a family up. Some okay. people eat fufu, and the fufu is as soft as uh, a, thinking, a thickened cocoa standing mm. in the kitchen. Mm. That is not good. Mm. You eat it, and then in the next hour, mm -hmm. it has turned into sugar already. Okay. So it will help you to get diabetes as well, mm. and a whole lot of things. Fufu has to take nine hours mm -hmm. to digest. Mm. So which means it has to be very hard. Mm. Uh -huh. It has to be very hard. You swallow and it scratches through your throat a little bit, but it will give you the strength that you need. And you will feel hungry to be 
craving for minerals that has a lot of sugar mm. and all those nuts okay. are also very good okay. for us. Okay, like granite. Uh, um, gra gra oh, no, seeds. Let me put okay. it seeds. Okay. Granite is also a seed. Yeah. Seeds in general, from granite to sunflower seeds. Okay. They are all very good for us. Mm. They build the body and then they take care of those problems. Mm. There will be no accumulation of mm. fat anywhere in the body if these things are uh, going into the, into body. the body. Okay. Okay. So we have to learn to eat right okay. uh, mm. and those are the things that will help us and then we have to be exercising okay. if we are exercising we always burn some amount of, of fat, fat in the body uh, and then calories mm. in the body so that help us to shape our lives mm. Uh -huh. mm. Mm. everything from the food table is worth taking it in the right proportions. Mm. When we say it, uh, eat, you don't have to eat a whole bowl of rice because you like you like rice. Mm. You cannot eat a whole bowl full of rice. You have to eat in you just portions. In portions. Okay. Uh -huh, just right. in portions. Okay. Just to keep the body going. Go then we have to drink a lot of water, water yeah. because water itself to its medicine as well. Mm. It cleanses the, the body mm. of so many things, things that are not supposed to be there. Mm. It will just work on them and then eliminate so many calciums that will be accumulated somewhere in the body. It will eliminate all and then the body is always clean. Mm. So we must always look for things that makes us feel good. Then moving our bowels mm. is also very, very important when it comes to health okay. with these issues. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Auntie Esther, for coming. We are very grateful for your time. I know that anytime we call on you, you are available to support us. God richly bless you. And to you, our viewers, thank you so much for making time to watch. God bless you for always having us and watching us in your homes. You can watch us on our Facebook. It's there on Hope TV GH or YouTube. You can watch it later on Hope TV GH. My name is Bibi. Meet you same time next week on Healthy Living. Thank you for watching. Take care. God bless. Good night. Changing lives. changing lives. Welcome once again, and it's good to see you. Great to know that you and your family have joined me as we meditate on God's word together. Tonight we're reading from Psalm 75, verse 1. Let's take our Bibles 
as we read together. Let's turn to Psalm 75 and verse 1. That is the word on which we'll be meditating upon. The Bible says, We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your wondrous works. Declare that your name is near. Amen. Many of us may wonder why it is so important to give praise and thanks to God. We as people that are made in God's image and his likeness, we love to be praised and exalted when we do something good. It is in our nature to always want to be praised and looked up to. Just like us, God also loves to be praised. But unlike us, he deserves our praise. No man can outdo God's goodness and love toward mankind. Therefore, his praise must be continuous in our mouth and pouring out of thanksgiving to him who deserves it all. Having a thankful heart makes us happy. God takes pleasure in our praise and thankfulness. Giving praise and thanks to God gives us better health. The amazing thing about being grateful and giving praise is that it is a personal choice that we all can make. When people are not grateful, they tend to complain. And that isn't good for anyone. For example, even though the Lord had delivered the Israelites from slavery and given them manna to eat, they were not grateful. Notice what happened. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it. Numbers 11 verse 1. So the Lord hears when we complain. And he does not like it. Tonight, I want to encourage you to have an attitude of giving thanks to God. It is a choice you can make. Thank God for his goodness. Thank God for the gifts of life. Thank God for your family, your children, your work, and your health. Great blessings are promised to those who are grateful. Oh, give thanks to God, for he is good. And now, as we end this devotional time together, my prayer is that the Lord will bless you and will keep you. That the Lord will make his face to shine upon you 